This video lecture and your assigned reading for Module 1 are the foundation for your discussion post. If you're interested in looking at the sources I mentioned during the lecture, you'll find them in the link to learn more on Canvas. This lecture is going to cover three things. It's going to provide an overview of technical editing, explain levels of edit, and explore the activities of technical editors. Let's start with an overview of technical editing. Here's how Merriam-Webster defines the verb edit. To prepare for publication or public presentation, as in edit a manuscript before publication as a book, or to assemble by cutting and rearranging, as in edit a film before release. Finally, to alter, adapt, or refine, especially to bring about conformity to a standard, as in edit a data file of an image to include an alternative text description. We can refine Merriam-Webster's definition with examples that are specific to technical editing. First, preparing a publication, a technical publication, might mean editing a user guide before distribution with a software product. Or assembly by cutting and rearranging could mean edit a recorded webinar before release as employee training. Finally, altering to bring about conformity to a standard could mean something like edit a topic file in a component content management system to implement the standard called DITA. Your assigned reading in this module provides the results of a survey of technical editors. Those results give you a sense of the wide variety of materials that are commonly included in technical editing. To understand contemporary technical editing, we need to think about what requires editing. Like all content, technical information was traditionally delivered on paper, but is increasingly and really overwhelmingly delivered in digital form today. Bill Gates is credited with saying that the Internet's greatest financial impact would be the delivery of content. That was way back in 1996, and at this point, I would say he appears to have been correct. Most people understand how editing has evolved in the business of traditional publishers, like newspapers, HuffPost, or book publishers, there's the big five, or even academic publishers that produce textbooks. But the web has made anyone with content into a publisher. I've listed a few non-traditional publishers. Some, like GE, now produce technical content online that requires editing. Others, like maybe the Motion Picture Association, they're producing non-technical content, but with newer web technology. The point is, the business of all of these quote-unquote publishers now involves technical editing. Your aside reading helps us understand what specifically technical editors focus on when they're editing. A related and critical concept for you to understand is something called the levels of edit. So let me explain. There are actually many schemes for categorizing what gets edited, Within tech editing, the most noted and comprehensive scheme is from Caltech's Jet Propulsion Lab, JPL, part of NASA. Their scheme from back in the 1980s included nine levels of editing performed by the editors that worked on their tech pubs. On this slide, I'm just going to give you five examples. If you want to investigate all nine, go to the Learn More link in Module 1 on Canvas. Coordination editing would be the activity involved with contacting authors when there were questions, for example. Integrity editing would include uh, ensuring that every figure in the original material was cited at least once within the text of the actual publication. A mechanical style edit would make sure that capitalization in the publication followed the most recent version of the style guide produced by GPO, or the Government Printing Office. Language editing, that included things like implementing parallelism in headings. And then 
Substantive editing would ensure that the title and the abstract of a publication accurately and consistently reflect the scope of content that actually appears in that publication. The point here is to recognize the different levels at which a JPL edited content. Some levels dealt with the accuracy of ideas, some with accurate implementation of mechanics according to established standards, others with consistency in ideas between portions of the publication. For our purposes in 5195, I'll refer to three levels of edit and use the following definitions. These are taken primarily from the professional standards published in 2016 by the Editors Association of Canada. So the first level, structural editing, focuses on the big picture, like whether the content and its organization meet the needs of the audience. Copy editing occupies the second level, and it's really what most people think of as editing. It focuses on stylistic effectiveness and on mechanical correctness. At the third level, proofreading is the most narrow type of editing with the emphasis on comparing the final product with the previous edited copy. These three levels of editing are listed in the order of their influence on or interference with the author's original work. In other words, structural editing makes the most profound changes to the author's work, while proofreading makes the least. Comprehensive editing describes the combination of all three levels of edit. It's critical that technical editors understand what level of edit they're performing in order to provide the expected results. For example, if you're asked to complete proofreading, it would be a mistake to ask the author to consider adding content or rearranging the sections of a publication. I'll provide more details about the specific levels of edit as I introduce your course assignments because you'll complete a structural edit, a copy editing test, and a comprehensive edit as your major assignments. Let's explore the third and final topic in this lecture, the varied activities of technical editors. I'm going to give you a definition from the Editors Association of Canada. Take a second and look at it. What's perhaps most important is that they clearly describe the editor as an intermediary and someone who works between the author or creator of the content, the audience for that content, and then the commissioning body. In other words, a news publisher like HuffPost or an organizational publisher like GE. Earlier in this video lecture, I made the point that the business of both traditional and non-traditional publishers now involves editing. Here's a part of a recent job ad for a technical editor from Amazon Web Services, or AWS. Amazon clearly describes the editor as an intermediary, and with one exception, they don't clearly name all the stakeholders that are involved. But based on what we know about techcom in industry and the results presented in your assigned reading for this module, I can guess that they might include, in addition to the training curriculum developers, engineers or other authors, project managers, designers, quality assurance staff, probably even technical writers. Whoever the specific stakeholders might be, it's clear that a tech editor at AWS must work with a team of individuals who have other roles and interests in the content. The survey results presented in your assigned reading in this module provide a sense of the wide variety of activities performed by tech editors. This slide lists the most common ones supplied by the 190 editors that were surveyed in 2011. The most common activity was copy editing or proofreading. Although the researchers did not categorize explicitly by the levels of edit, there is some evidence that multiple levels of edit are the norm. For example, reviewing drafts, working with authors, editing by committee, those are all likely to involve structural editing, not simply copy editing. It's important to note that more than 25% of the editors said they manage subordinates. It's common for tech editors in industry to supervise the work of tech writers. In other words, tech editors are often former tech writers 
who've been promoted into a management role. The survey results provide additional evidence that multiple levels of edit are the norm for tech editors. While a focus on style would certainly involve copy editing, a focus on content or organization or even format and usability would all involve structural editing. Before we leave these survey results, I want to note that the reported 70% of the editors who were focused on accessibility has likely increased since this survey in 2011. The researchers did not define accessibility as it relates to Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 in the U.S. Standards for web content apply widely now. There are guidelines and standards not only in the U.S. but also abroad. For example, the European Commission and the World Wide Web Consortium. One final point. Although I won't always discuss your assigned reading in detail, the amount of relevant content in this module means that I wanted to do so. Before I end this video, let me make sure you know there are many resources available for professional editors. If you're interested, check out the list of sources on Canvas for this module. These include links to the websites of active bloggers who are editors, as well as professional organizations that focus on editing. Mm -hmm.